Hottest Hearthstone takes. Let's see what people said. Prince Renathal being nerfed prevented a pseudo game mode from being made. Could easily see a Renathal queue if he was never nerfed. Dude, this is spicy. Prince Renathal being nerfed sucked, man. I really miss it still because at least in 10 more life, the game felt different. And that is something that I have been like really advocating is just having 10 more life and like feeling a different pace of Hearthstone was really, really cool. I wonder if making Renathal like a 10 mana 1-1 would have been different. So you just you just have a dead card in your deck. I wonder if that was fun. The overall story about the League of Explorers, League of Evil and Galakron is way better story than most of the recent expansions of WoW. I can't attest to this, but I did really like the dragon one. I think the League of Evil thing was my favorite year of Hearthstone. If there was only the existing solo adventures in the client, it'd be a better game. Holy shit. Now that's a spicer if I've ever seen one. This one is definitely more like if you like the the solo game modes in Hearthstone, I could definitely see this. There's a lot of people who like the solo modes literally only play the solo mode. There's probably a very collective community that just only plays dungeon runs. I, I really like the solo adventures, right? Replaying them recently was really, really good. I don't know if it would be a better game without like the main format, right? No single player adventure has topped the original dungeon run. I actually hard disagree with this. What does this guy say? I don't think they were worse. They just weren't better. I think Dalaran Heist was the best one. Dalaran Heist was phenomenal. Frozen Throne, Death Knight Hero cards, Death Stalker, Rexter, et cetera, were the most fun cards to win in any expansion. This one's interesting because like, I feel like if you had a lot of nostalgia for the hero cards when they first got released, you probably loved it. Uh, this was like, this is a lot of people's favorite expansions because this is the first time we got hero cards other than Jaraxxus, but I wouldn't really call this a hot take. The game is still tremendously fun. Every expansion you hear people complain and say that the game is dead. I enjoyed both Colossals and Titan a ton and spent a large amount of my playtime just using cool strategies like Quest Taunt Warrior on duels. Eight wins, by the way. You have a lot of fun in the game, just not in Stormwind or against Druid half the time. <laughs> Specifically calling out Druid. This year has been very decent and the last year was crazy fun. Sunken City was excellent. Nathria was hurt by them by not nerfing Denathrius until the next expansion. But Renathal's God set and Marta Lich King of Frozen Thrones core set before it was hyper fun. I actually legitimately think that Prince Renathal was the highlight of last year. I don't even think it was the I don't even think it was the Death Knight class. I think it was legitimately Prince Renathal. But, you know, I actually kind of agree with this. A lot of people look back at Hearthstone with like rose colored glasses and think that the game was so much better. And it's going to be funny because the twist format that we have is basically older cards. So I think people are going to remember that a lot of the game played the same except for there was just less like interesting cards because they were making a game for like brand new players. As someone who started in Old Gods, Voyage is by far the coolest and best expansion. Duncan City goaded expansion. Voyage is by far the coolest and best expansion. I don't know, man. I thought Voyage was good, but I wouldn't call it like when Dexter and I did the draft. I think I put it in top five, though. I really liked it. I thought it was really, really good. But it's not, I don't think it was the best expansion. I think still the best expansion was on Goro. Random card generation such as Discover is Hearthstone's best and most interesting feature. The developers do a great job designing the game around these mechanics. God, that's fucking hot. See, Discover is really good because it allows games to play differently. Like random is great in a game like this because games always feel different. But there's a there's a point where like you lean too much into discover and like random generation that it makes the game just not as fun. This is definitely like a balancing act. If it's done right, like if Discover's done right, it probably is Hearthstone's best mechanic. There is a reason why people really liked really liked it during League of Explorers. But then they overdid it with like lackeys. I don't know, man. I don't This is I think a lot of people like I think most people are either like I fucking hate Discover and RNG or I really like it there. When Discover was first introduced, they they had a really good trade off for it. You got a card generation like you got card generation, but it was at the payoff of tempo or is that the trade off of tempo? Sorry, I should say nowadays you don't really trade off Discover for tempo anymore. Now it's like if you're going to discover, it's probably on a good card. So as we got later in Hearthstone's lifespan, Discover and RNG have become a lot more prominent because the cards that they're on are just better. Galakron was a fantastic addition to Hearthstone. They should add one for other heroes in another expansion. <laughs> Galakron was good. Power level wise, it was hit and miss. I don't know if they should add it for another expansion, though. I, I don't know. I think Galakron was an expansion like Descent of Dragons in general. Like you either really liked it again because of how intense the power level was, because Descent of Dragons was a really, really insane expansion compared to the previous two. And Galakron allowed a lot of decks to be very powerful. The main ones that come to my mind are Shaman and Rogue. 
I don't know if I would want it again. I hated the rogue one, man. Rogue was fun to play, but got against playing the rogue Galakron. It was like one of the worst experiences ever, man. The, the problem with hero cards in general is it generally feels like whoever draws the hero card first is winning the game. So that's a weird balancing act because you don't want the game to feel like who draw the hero card first won the game and everything else is irrelevant. Galakron was interesting though, because they added the, the ability to invoke it. So even if you didn't play it first, if you got more invokes, potentially your Galakron was stronger, right? Warrior is an amazing class with a lot of potential that Blizzard refuses to recognize. It's fun to play as, especially with Odin as overall fun class. I think, okay, this is my hot take here, chat. This is my hot take. Warrior is one of the best classes throughout Hearthstone's entire history. People look at the last couple years of Warrior and go, what the hell happened to my class? It's so awful. It's always been this bad. Dude, Warrior was playable in Classic. It was playable in Old Gods. It was the best class in Mean Streets. It was playable during Witchwood. Like it was, a, it's always been a really good class. Warrior has a, had a lot of times where they've just been a tier one deck. Fatigue and heavy control archetypes are the most fun decks in the game. So much counter play, especially Amir's make for really interesting games. <sighs> Fatigue and heavy control archetypes are the most fun decks in the game. This is probably if you're the one playing it. If you're not playing this, a lot of people end up not liking the game because most people don't, and I'm just gonna, this is my hot take chat. Most people don't have the, I don't, I don't wanna say brain power, but like realization in Hearthstone games where they just know they lost, right? A lot of aggro players will like continue playing against the control deck, even though they've lost for like five turns now, right? And they go like, oh my God, this guy has removal for everything. So people end up hating those archetypes because it's like, I concede often because I realize like when I lose games, right? The issue is, is that when this deck is the most popular in the game, the metagame is very slow and often, especially in current Hearthstone, it definitely feels like whoever discovers the better cards ends up winning like control mirror matches in in the world championship of last year. It was like a pre smear. And it, if you watched it, it was like an hour long game. And it just was like who generated the better cards won the game. And that's what it felt like, even though I'm sure there's a ton more nuance to it. Right. People don't want to spend an hour of their life queuing into control decks over and over again. Ben Brode was responsible for some of the worst monetization and the least fun parts of the gameplay of game of the gameplay with the refusal to balance and game warping RNG cards. Crackle and implosion were mistakes. The gameplay improved significantly once he stopped having control over it, even if the game wasn't as popular at this peak. Holy fuck. Okay, this is actually a really spicy one, but let me talk about this. Why? Okay, Ben Brode, I did a whole video on this, by the way. Ben Brode made a video game for new players. OK, the reason why there was less balance patches in the beginning of Hearthstone is because you don't want a player who can't play every single day to come back and be like, I don't know what's happening. There's too many changes. I'm not going to play this game anymore. That was his logic chat. I guarantee you they thought about it a lot. Now, did they design some really bad cards? Yeah, absolutely. Crackle and Implosion were absolutely abysmal designs, and I still bring it up to this day because I fucking hate Implosion. I think it's very easy to look at the flaws that Ben Brode added to this game and forget that he actually is a huge reason why the game is here today, right? Without Ben Brode, we probably wouldn't have Hearthstone because he designed the game with his team to make it as accessible as possible in the early days of Hearthstone, right? I said it earlier that this is probably a lot of people's very first card game. Having the ability to be as accessible as possible and not have so many changes was a really, really big deal. It's it's a huge reason why the game was so popular. Now, I think Ben Brode really dropped the ball probably around, what expansion was it? Maybe like Cobalt and Catacombs, I think is where, actually, I don't know, there's Barnes too. Like there's, there's a lot of really abysmal cards. You know, in hindsight, I kind of agree with this. <laughs> if he balanced the game more, earlier on, I think the game would have maintained a lot of its players. I don't know about monetization though, because Ben Brode's job was game director. I think even in Marvel Snap, he's probably not in charge of the design of monetization. He probably maybe has some input, but he doesn't probably get the final say. Like there's no way he, he, he goes to Blizzard's like executives and go like, no, we're doing this to monetization. Uh, mean Streets was an amazing set that introduced a lot of interesting deck archetypes at its core. Bro, um, okay. Mean Streets definitely suffered from patches. All right. If you guys don't remember, Mean Streets was basically patches. <laughs> it's like, it was, you played Pirate Warrior until it was nerfed. And then there was a little bit more. 
but they did introduce a lot of really cool things. I actually really like the flavor of that expansion because there was like the tribes, like the Jades, the Cabal, and the Grimy Street Goons. Uh, the goons kind of got railed uh, because they were so weak because they thought hand buffing was so broken for some reason, but they just kind of forgot that, you know, patches the pilots kind of broken. God, I don't know, man. It introduced a lot. Maybe the problem with Mean Streets was just purely balance because if it was released, if it was released with proper balancing, I think it would have been OK. Quest lines were a very cool idea and shouldn't have been abandoned after United. This is the hottest take so far. I don't like this. I don't. I, it's making me angry reading it. Ice cold take, David? What? Quest lines were a very cool idea and you're saying ice cold take? No shot, bro. Cool idea, bad execution. Agree to be honest, the balancing of quest lines was the main problem. So, you know, I actually did a whole video on this chat. We talked about, it was like early last year of like, were quest lines a mistake? And the general idea I got from it was if a quest line fundamentally changes the game after it is finished, it's probably Probably not good for your game. This one got nerfed. This one didn't get nerfed, but it doesn't have a continuous effect after it was finished. This one got nerfed. This one got nerfed. This one did not get nerfed. This was actually like one that did not get nerfed and it does have a continuous effect. This one did not get nerfed, but again, not a continuous effect because you gotta play the card and then draw the card to kill your opponent. This one did it, didn't have a continuous effect. This one got nerfed. This one got nerfed and banned in wild. And this one got nerfed. So every single one besides the Paladin one that had a continuous effect did not get, it got nerfed. Sorry, it got nerfed. Quest lines were a cool idea. I guess the, the take is if the quest lines were more like this, I think I can get behind it. Oh, buddy, we're moving on to one to another one. Priest isn't a toxic class. Favorite deck to play in always will be Highlander, Galakrong, Kronk, Dragon Priest. Yes, I mean Priest. How many of you guys think Priest is a bad class? <laughs> I'm getting his IP right now. Hold on a sec. Wow, that's a hot one, buddy. I don't know, dude. Priest isn't a toxic class. Again, I think it's very dependent on if you're playing it versus playing it. But I think most people would agree that Priest is awful to play against. God, those fucking sucked. It, well, it, it, when Priest is the best class in the game, I don't play Hearthstone. That's just as simple as that. So I don't agree with this at all. I think this is heresy. And I think this deck was fine as, as something to play against, but I don't, this is no fucking way, bro. Priest is and has been my favorite class since I started playing Hearthstone. The archetypes and play styles, excluding big priest. Okay, this is this is good. This is good. We like to see this. Just seem way more interesting to play than other classes. Um, I, I see, I, I really, listen, I'm not a priest player personally, so I don't agree with this at all. Oh, these fucking priest players, man. <laughs> all right. The Year of the Dragon was the best three expansions run in Hearthstone history. Galak and Rogue was the most fun I had playing in Hearthstone. So that was Rise of Shadows. That was Savers of Uldum. And that was Descent of Dragons. That was a good year of Hearthstone. If you minus the Dr. Boom control phase and the... Remember when they did like they brought wild cards to standard for a bit and then Evolve Shaman ran Savers of Uldum? Like we don't count that either. I think Savers of Uldum was one of the best expansions Hearthstone has ever had. So I am I'm in this boat. I also thought the overarching story in that expansion was probably my favorite year of Hearthstone in terms of just like lore based things. The reform leading a bunch of villains was really cool. The League of Explorers fighting back. It was a cool thing to pay attention to as well as play the cards. And I'm actually really hoping that Blizzard does that again. The Witchwood had the best meta of any expansion. Holy fuck, this man out here with the coldest take I've ever seen, man. Wow, Witchwood had the best meta. I don't think I've ever read this in my life. God, I think this is also her heresy. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. Let me think of the highlights for Witchwood. I think Gen and Baku for the first expansion were fine. Shutterwalk was very popular. Like, What was the good decks in Witchwood? I can't even remember. Agatha was fun. I really liked Agatha. Oh, but hold on, chat. The World Championship with um, Hunter Ace was during the Witchwood expansion, and that arguably was the best World Championship we've ever seen. Maybe this guy's onto something here. It was a good meta. Like the first expansion, after they nerfed Shutterwalk, it was actually not a bad expansion. Thief Priest is the most fun archetype, and Murloc Holmes is peak card design. Okay, let's break this down in two different ones. Murloc Holmes is peak card design. Let's go take a peek at Murloc Holmes, shall we? Do you guys think, like, this is not a bad card. That's a frog. No, that's a Murloc. It's a cool card. Peak Hearthstone design. See, I, it wasn't a great card, but I did like it. 
He must really like it. It's a fun card. Thief Priest is the most fun archetype. Hmm. I think Thief Rogue is more fun. Incorrect. Bad of you guys are so mean. <laughs> This is hot takes your chat. They're supposed to get you riled up. The new way cards are released with insane synergy and packages makes for boring deck experimentation as opposed to the older sets. I don't know if that's a hot take per se, though. The mo uh, Hearthstone is most popular out of rotation because it's the easiest way to get into the game, right? And if you're coming right into the game, the best way of getting into the game is having a deck built for you. They don't want you to think about like, how do I build this deck, right? So if you're a brand new player and you don't want to go to find the best deck online, you just put all the mechs in your deck and you're chilling. Uh, Dark Moon Fair is an underrated expansion. The meta felt great. I feel so bad for Dark Moon Fair, dude. And I, I, I don't necessarily think this is a very hot take. Dark Moon Fair followed the atrocious release of the battle pass system do you guys remember that time that was a that was a very spicy time for hearthstone so when dark moon fair was being released they it kind of got completely swept under the the hype for the expansion got completely swept under the um the tragedy that was the battle pass system so when dark moon fair released people weren't excited for it because they're like who gives a fuck about this new expansion my gold and income rightfully so was taken away from me right like the people were very upset about it secrets are an incredible mechanic that reward game knowledge and decision making during your turn and is an interesting way of developing tempo too the thing holding them back is design cards like objection and counterspell which sometimes don't leave the opponent with a choice at all and makes refreshing experiences holy shit okay yeah, i actually agree with this a lot i actually do think that secrets are a really good mechanic in the game because it's the only way that we get to interact with our opponent on their turn in a sense like it's one of the few ways i should say because there's other ways of doing it and i think secrets were designed very very well in the early days of hearthstone all the hunter ones were great because it did reward you for knowing the game right like knowing around playing around explosive trap knowing to play around freezing trap was fun right mage is also a really good example except for this one fuck this one blizzard has been kind of a little bit more willing to give them a lot more power so you get cards like this which is really good. You get cards like, um, what's another really good? Like this one's, in, this one's really good in the early game, right? It's insane. Um, like this one's fucked. I hate this one so much. It still embodies the core design of secrets. I do think secrets should be like less in a vacuum and more, more like this is a specific thing it does. You got to start playing around it now, just in case. All right. Denathrius should never be nerfed. What did they do to Denathrius? Oh yeah, I forgot. It's been a while. If I remember correctly, his previous iteration was endless, endlessly infuse one instead of endlessly infuse two. The problem with Denathrius is that every single win condition for a lot of the decks during Nathria before it was nerfed was based on this card. So in Hearthstone, this is just design like purely when you lose to a card, you hate that card more because that's the last thing you see before either a you lost the game or uh, you conceded. So this was the main win condition during Nathria. And I think people just fucking hated this card because it was the last thing they saw before they died, right? Now people don't play him. So I wonder like, and that's been a year. Also, that was when Renathal was like really good. Bran was the problem is pure coat. Bran enabled more degeneracy with the card, but he wasn't necessarily the problem. Druid's the problem, if I'm going to be honest. I think if they unnerfed him now, he would be okay, though. I think that the kill pressure in this game is a little higher than it was during Nathria. So I could see him being unnerfed, but I don't know if they will. This isn't a hot take at all, but I'm going to add this in anyways. I think that a 2v2 mode in Hearthstone would be the biggest thing they could do other than allowing us to combine classes to make decks. I am praying to God that the Hearthstone team behind the scenes is working on this, either if it's for Battlegrounds or if it's for, for Standard or it's for a new mode. I don't give a shit. Please add this to the game. Ross the Khan's Rumble was a fun and well-themed expansion screwed over by its place in the rotation. No, 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 no. Th this is this is our this is not even a hot take, bro. That's a wrong take. Ross the Khan's Rumble was released in such a way that all of the cards, except for maybe like six of them, were fucking dog shit. Right? The 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 mechanic was bad. They were balanced in a way that was bad. Their mana cost was too fucking high. It was a horrible expansion. 
expansion. Now, the reason why it was a horrible expansion is because they didn't want the game to keep getting power corrupt. So they released Rostakon's Rumble at such a low power level that the expansion sucked ass. Now, I am gonna add, it was a very well-themed expansion. The flavor of the cards and the, the cards that we ended up getting was really cool. And that fucking trailer, dude, oh my God. We need a Highlander card in every expansion. Nah. Non-interactive decks are some of the most fun excl- Oh my, hold on, hot take alert. Non-interactive decks are some of the most fun and skill expressive ones. Like the old Flame Waker Sources Apprentice OTK and Wild was really hard to pilot and so much fun. Let me read the comments before I even comment on this. Some of the most recent heal priests wasn't skillful at all. They're fun, but only to the person playing them. Yes, mega, mega based. Good take, but those types of decks should be difficult to play with if you manage to win the game by six or seven with the same underactive combo, it's bad game style. So Hearthstone, for those of you guys, you guys may not agree with this, but Hearthstone really tries to have a zero sum fun game to a positive some fun game and let me bring the paint out so we can describe what that means okay you have player one and then you have player two if player one is having five we'll just do plus five player two is not having any fun let's just do minus five that what does that equal chat everyone together what's plus five um five minus five what does that equal oh great job chat it equals zero so that is a zero sum fun game. That means one player is having fun, another player is not having fun, but on average, it's just kind of whatever, okay? Now, the goal for every game designer, especially in a PVP game, is to do this. This is this is legitimately the goal, and I guarantee if I brought any of the developers on right now, they would say the exact same thing. Can I like, hold on. They want, they want uh, the their opponent, your opponent to just do this. They just wanna have zero. Because if your opponent's at zero, they're neutral. That means you're having a positive sum fun game, right? You have a plus five. That means the game in general is more, is just fun, right? It's fun for somebody. Someone's not having a negative time. That's the inevitable goal of every game designer. Actually, the dream, I guess, is to have this to have also fun, but it's hard to do in a game like Hearthstone. But what ends up happening with the combo thing is that generally speaking, there's minus five, so it equals out or the person is having such a horrible time that it's like minus 10. You may have fun, but your opponent is having such a miserable time that they're not going to be playing another game of Hearthstone, which was basically by the re for the record what United Stormwind was for a lot of players. That's why I hated it so much is because I didn't want to play the game anymore. Yeah. Is, is Rare trying to be hired by the Blizzard through these speeches? You think I want to go work at Blizzard? Free milk. <laughs> you guys are that's fucking awful man all right it's only still popular because it was the first digital card game that blew up and put tcg on the map for a lot of gamers i actually think this is a hot take for the wrong reason hearthstone is popular because it's the most accessible card game currently online and it's also the best experience for a card game online don't fucking at me chat that is just facts objectively it's the best experience for a card game um and that's why it's still so popular because it's just a good fucking game i think that the sunk cost of people's like time and money definitely help it be more popular because people don't want to leave a game where they've put so much time and money into it obviously but I think if you put, if Hearthstone was on Steam, I think it'd be the highest card game on the Steam ladder easily. Hearthstone is pretty accessible if you're a free to play player, that's facts, but nothing will ever be as soul sucking as logging into the day of rotation and seeing all three of your decks you just made get converted into wild. Yeah, I so, <sighs> Raynad, I was watching Raynad stream the other day because he was talking about like he wanted to follow up his update for the bazaar or whatever. And one of the things he said was Hearthstone has a very archaic form of like dust and economy. And the biggest drop off for Hearthstone was after the grand tournament because of rotation. Uh, when the first rotation hap happened, there was a huge drop off of players because people realized that a lot of their cards are no longer going to be playable and people were pissed about it. Hearthstone currently is a lot more free to play accessible. Um, and you get a lot more in 2023 Hearthstone. But back in the day, I'd never really considered how much of an impact it really had. Um, I was thinking that the Grand Tournament was so shit that it just felt bad that put money into a game where it, like your cards might not even be playable. So people left. But the rotation probably had a huge impact. That being said, rotation is really good for the game because it keeps the game fresh. And we see what happens when you don't have rotations. I'm not going to say the game out loud, but like, yeah. All right. Anyways, let's move on. Discover and randomness are when used well are actually candidates for skill expression. Yes, 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 yes. And then you have to work with what's being given to you on a game basis rather than the same deck over and over. Okay, this is actually a really good line. Randomness is skill expression. Picking the right card from your discover actually ends up mattering quite a bit. Uh, it is a big deal, but it is very hard to see that because you don't get to see the other options that your opponent gets. When your opponent plays a discover card, it 
it feels fucking awful sometimes because it's like, oh, they have the perfect card that they obviously discovered, right? But you don't you didn't get to see their thought process picking the card. Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes you just need a removal. You pick the removal, right? But oh, I don't want to like any of these because then I show bias. But I agree. That's actually a lot. Discover is by far the mechanic that seemed the most fun was introduced, but now is arguably ruining the game. I don't think the discover mechanic has gotten worse over the years. I talked about this earlier, but the problem with discover right now is that there's no longer a trade off for using it, right? Cards with discover are just good cards now before. Like if I go chat, I don't know how many of you guys have actually looked at League of Explorers cards, but let's go look at the discover cards in here, shall we? Look at this. Some of them are fucking some of them are miserable, bro. Right. It was playable back in the day, but you you literally traded tempo for a generation. Right. Same with this thing. This card was fucking like it was cool to see, but it was just never playable because it was so fucking slow. Right. Same with Tomb Spider. Nowadays, when we look at Discover, I'll just go to the most recent expansion, right? Discover a spell from your deck. If it's a Frost Spell, freeze it. Like, that's just a fine card, right? This card's insane, right? It, it, you don't lose any tempo. You don't really lose any tempo because you get the tempo back later. This card's nuts. Like, th there's so many good cards in the expansion now. Or so many good Discover cards in the pool that Discover doesn't have a trade-off anymore. Yeah, Teacher's actually probably the best example. Like, Teacher's insane. So there's no longer a trade off for tempo anymore. And that's that's probably the issue with a lot of discovered cards, right? Most hero powers are so weak at their current power level that if it weren't specific decks to buff their utility, removing them wouldn't leave a big dead. That's an interesting one. Hero powers were designed to not be what you want to do every single turn. Hero powers have gotten worse because they were designed 10 years ago. So I think that's kind of obvious, right? The two best hero powers in the game are the two newest ones other than maybe Warlock. I think that if they were removed, though, it would leave a big dent in the game. There should be a game mode where you could choose up to five cards that you don't want to play. <laughs> Dude, this would literally be like, like they would call it like the salt cue where like you lose to a card and you're like, fuck that card. And then I don't want to play against that card. That's a hot take, dude. I don't know if they'll ever do something like that. But what they would do potentially is because they've talked about it before, like just ban a class from Q. Like you could ban a class a month. I'd ban Demon Hunter and just never play against it. But then it gets really weird with balancing, right? Because if I never have to play against Demon Hunter, I just play the, the, the deck that's the worst against Demon Hunter. Then you're chilling. Mill decks are easily the most satisfying decks to play. All right, bro. This this one's like spice. This one, this one's straight out of the oven. Most people <laughs> fucking hate mill decks. This is like the same thing as like not interactive decks though, right? Like people just don't like losing to nonsense. Erm ban, key point to play. Yeah, exactly. Playing against it could be pretty fucking miserable. I actually see a lot of comments talking about how much people hate Mildred and Wild right now. Priest had two of the funniest archetypes ever for both players, Thief and Galakron Priest. Warrior is the most frustrating class to play against and also the most boring to play with. This is subjective. We've, we've seen people talk about this before, so I'll move on from this one. But uh, this one's very, very interesting. Warrior's the most frustrating class to play against? I think Warrior is a pretty fair class, to be honest. Like, I can't think of a lot of times where Warrior is like bullshit. The only time I think Warrior was just absolutely like insane was just Pirate Warrior and, and Mean Streets. But like Warrior's the most frustrating class to play against often comes up with just like, is it a control deck? I don't like playing against control, then I move on with my life, right? Man, I don't even know how to respond to this. Like this is purely just like, an opinion thing, right? Like uh, maybe you just hate fucking playing against warrior. Arena is the purest form of Hearthstone. Like, I mean, it's definitely a game mode in Hearthstone. I don't know if it's the purest because how do you define what purest is? I don't know, man. I think arena is if you like board centric decks, I think that's where people will really go. Creating the core set to be the introduction cards is an unreasonable punishment for a loyal player base. Holy fuck, bro. This is the hottest take ever. Oh my God. What? Wow. I'm going to I'm going to say something out loud and I want to hear your guys thoughts on this. I am under the idea that if my life was very hard, I wouldn't want the person like, OK, sorry. If I worked at a job and that my when I got to the job, it was fucking hard. It was very difficult. And it was like I had to struggle to get to where I was. Right. And here comes a new person. I wouldn't want that person to go through what I went through. Right. I would want them to have a better time than I did because I knew how awful it was starting off. Right. And that's what the core set basically for. It's a huge way for people to get into the game without them buying a bunch of stuff. Right. 
I don't think the punishment for new players should be there because you're a loyal, you're a loyal player. I, I don't think I, I, I really disagree with this take. I really agree. I really disagree with this. The core set is arguably the one or not arguably. It's one of the best things that the Hearthstone team has ever done. Before Demon Hunter, Druid was the most experimental class with almost everything in the most annoying mechanics. Now Demon Hunter took his role and I can finally enjoy playing with Anne versus Druid. Holy fuck. Okay, hold on. Before Demon Hunter, Druid was the most experimental class with almost everything and the most annoying mechanics. I mean, all right, let's be real here. Throughout Hearthstone's history, the best class in the game of all time is Druid. Like I, I, I stand behind that. I think Druid is Druid has been objectively the best class throughout Hearthstone's history. But I don't think they're the most experimental class. I think the most experimental class is Shaman. Shaman is the fucking just the weirdest class because you either get absolute dog shit or you get something insane. And sometimes you get something something in between but it's also kind of dog shit shaman is just shaman's the fucking the, the guinea pig for most of the shit like i feel like shaman has gotten some really fucking weird archetypes over the years now demon hunter took his role and finally i can enjoy playing versus druid I, I will say this i will say this i agree with this take i think fucking demon hunter has the most annoying mechanics in the game i say it i'll say it i said it before chat and i'll say it again fucking hate that class i think it's the worst class to play against it never makes me excited to play against demon hunter i'm never excited to play against it there's always some fucking bullshit with that class i think shaman needs some inherent rework as a class no other class has has the feast or famine identity that shaman does they're either the best class in the game or practically hey i just said this i just said this i think shaman needs like a, a direction though like it doesn't have a direction. It's like totems in nature, which is apparently not enough. <laughs> arena should rotate a lot more often. Plus not that hard of a take now. I think printing more arena only cards would be amazing. I don't know if they would ever do that. We'll talk about this one in a sec. Runestones were not bad. They were not good though. They're more like whatever. Yeah, see the thing about runestones, like runestones was like the, they're like in-game currency for Hearthstone. Again, I don't know why they made it to begin with because it feels like they don't even use them anymore. But the concept behind it was it allowed them to make items for smaller purchases. Like, okay, hold on. If you buy an emote for Battlegrounds and it's a dollar, like they didn't want to charge you a dollar every single time. So if you buy runestones, right, that means they could skip that that transaction fee. They could sell you like cheaper items and they did this, but then I think they just stopped doing it. Guff hero card was refreshing and made the class, the druid class, the most fun it's been. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. I, I do agree with this though, man. I think uh, one of my favorite moments in Hearthstone is playing with Guff. I think it's very easy to hate this card, but playing him is pretty fucking fun because it breaks the rules of the games. And I think cards that break the rules of the game make for fun cards. Above all else, Hearthstone's supposed to be a fun game to play. Death Knight was a mistake. This class is in a pigeonhole with the rune system and makes other classes suffer for its requirement to have three separate archetypes, removing the option to add dimensions to other classes in the future. Okay. Death Knight was not a mistake. Death Knight's fine. All right, Death Knight's fine. Now, I do agree with this. The class is in a pigeonhole with the rune system because they have to like abide by these rune system rules. So it does make the class feel a little bit more jank, but it's not a mistake. Like there's no way. Removing the option to add dimensions to other. I don't understand how the, the three second archetypes removes the dimensions to other classes in the future. I think the only class that, that this has impacted so far is warrior trying to get a signature card isn't worth five hundred dollars okay let me talk about this dude i see this so much i see this so much bro i see this so fucking much okay it's not the five hundred dollars for one card all right i got a ton of dust i got a lot of golden cards it's whatever but the main thing is this is that it's a tax write-off for me if i was someone who didn't play this game or if i if i played this game as a non-streamer i wouldn't fucking spend 500 dollars to get a fucking card i don't give a shit that much but it's content and you guys were remember that stream when we opened it it was fucking awesome and I get to make videos on it anyways. Don't fucking say copium. Shut up. Chat, tell me this isn't fucking beautiful. Tell me it's not beautiful. Look at him. I don't know why I opened that to get roasted anymore. Hot take. HS is not a dead game. Listen, despite of what people say in YouTube comments or on Reddit, Hearthstone is not a dead game. It's fine. Hearthstone should focus more on solo content. It's the only reason I play. Oh God, a lot of solo content people. United Storm was a turning point that made Wild way better. It gave so many more decks lethality, which pushed Cube Lock, my most hated deck in the game, out of the meta. Now, if we could push out Secret Mage, they finally nerfed a Secret Mage card at least, but it was Undercard. I have no thoughts on Wild, but from what I hear, I don't think lethality is very needed. Shutterwalk was the first card to effectively break the game. Incorrect, actually. Also, I love your profile picture if you watch this, because that's from Kenny versus Spenny, I believe. Uh, chat, do you know what my most, do you know what my most viewed video is on the channel of all time? And I can tell you right now, 
It's not Shutterlock. So little uh, go check that video if you haven't seen it. Uh, Demon Hunter has never been the most annoying class to come against Everett. All right, I'm going to ban this person. Anyone have thoughts? If Mercenaries had been marketed properly, not only would it still be alive, it would be an eSport today. <laughs> I don't think the problem with mercenaries is how it was marketed. I think the problem with mercenaries is how it was made. Like they did a pretty good job of getting people interested into the game mode, right? They had a stream and everything, right? That's more than like they do for almost anything else. But the game just wasn't balanced, right? They It was in the oven for two hours, but it needed to be in the oven for three. Like they needed way more time. It had the potential to be a really good game mode. They also fucked up so hard, dude. They fucked up so hard. Oh my God. If they didn't nerf the the elemental in the first week it would have been way better and if they nerfed the lira when she came out in december or november i can't remember it would have also been really good for mercenaries Valera was the point where the game died, but it was already on its deathbed before that. I do kind of miss mercenaries. We, we should do a mercenary stream and just see how good it is. Cause it's been like a year since they like killed it. Maybe it's fun. Copium. Unleash the hounds for two mana was balanced. I gotta double check. So he's talking about this one for each minion. So this card used, just used to be two. Card was fucking uber nuts at three, so incorrect. Everyone misses the soul adventure content dungeon runs, but nobody actually wants to pay from. That's probably very true. Chat, would you, for people who like the soul adventures, if Blizzard charged you 20 bucks for like a Dalaran Heist expansion, would you play it? Would you buy it? You got no new cards. It just, it just changed the game a little bit. It added some updates. No, yeah, see like, there you go. They should make all cards available in an attempt to resurrect the game. Dude, the game isn't fucking dead. All right. Like this is I think people have the wrong idea that Hearthstone's literally in its grave, bro. It is still popular till this day. Is it as popular as it used to be? No, obviously. But that's just what happens with time. Hearthstone, in my opinion, if they want to make the game more popular, I think they need to break the game in the sense that like Prince Renafal did. They need to do something like make you can make um like a twist format where you can make um, a deck with two classes. That That's, I think they need to do something that just has not been in the game yet. 2v2 mode is another really good example of it, right? There, there's 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 a lot of potential with this game mode. Baku and Gen from Witchboard were balanced and gave flavor to the game. It's not that they weren't balanced. The problem with Gen and Baku was they just made every game play the exact same. People got tired of playing against the mechanic and then they rotated it early because people were tired of seeing it. OTK decks are really fun to fight. See, this is where I this is where I'm confused because do you really fight OTK decks currently? They kind of just play solitaire. I older OTK decks were fun to fight. Newer ones, I'm not so sure. Makari sacrifices it. <laughs> Whew, that's a hot that's a hot boy right there. Ain't no way, champ. I wonder if this card would be better if this card was slightly different. Like if you got to pick the discard discard every single time, like in Magic. I don't know. I, I don't think it's a good. There's way better win conditions than Warlock. Anyways, while it should be easy to balance with monthly nerf outliers and quick bans, the problem cards allowing for unique monthly experience. I agree, but the problem with this is that they'll never do it. <laughs> or th what they should do is like make a third format, something like uh, like shake up, mix up um, to like do this. I don't know. Grim Patient Warrior took immense skill to play and never should have been nerfed. The amount of times I watched my opponent panic, I watched an opponent panic and end up not OTK my me, I guess, just for me to OTK them back the following turn was so incredibly fun. This is not a hot take. Uh, Grim Patient was a very hard deck to play at the highest level. Uh, never should have been nerfed. They they nerfed worse on Commander, though, because the deck could literally kill you on turn seven. I think also at the highest level, there was like no way to consistently beat it. So they, they had to do something to it. I It'll be interesting to see how Grim Patron is in the twist format because the whole deck is playable. Uh, and in current Hearthstone, the amount of cards played in... Uh, sorry. In current Hearthstone, the amount of cards played slash turn... What the fuck? The amount of cards played in a turn is too high since you can afford to play a lot more cards. They do this intentionally, man. Um, like I said, people, they like, they've clearly realized the pattern of people like to play cards. So that they, they keep on letting people play a lot more cards. Less power in the metal equals more fun. <laughs> is this a hot take though? Raren is the best Hearthstone streamer. Now this is a hot take. Oh my God. Yo, what the fuck? Uh, Hearthstone is a lot more fun than it actually is to play the game. I think Hearthstone is the most enjoyable when you play it for an hour. But if I'm playing longer than an hour, I'd rather watch it for the most part.
but I kind of do like streaming it. Truly believe HX experience would be better if mage didn't exist as a class. Okay. Even when they're not in tier one deck, they are far in a way the most annoying class in every expansion. Random generation that rivals Baron's priest secrets that are immune to secret counters. I agree this. Fuck that shit. And easily the most annoying defensive cards to be printing. Ice block sound. I'll buy in the freeze mechanic as a whole. Holy shit. That's a hot take. I'll tell you what though, man. Mage is probably the most popular class in the game. Most people start off the game with Mage and people fall in love with it. Mage has had some bullshit. Don't get me wrong, but I think Hearthstone needs Mage. I couldn't imagine the game without it. That was a fucking spicer, bro. Aggro decks are harder to play than control. Holy shit. Uh, control is easier in the sense that it's reactive. So you, you're as an aggro player, you have to kind of like think about how to actually win the game. Control players are like, oh, how do I react to what you're doing? I, okay, here's a weird thought. Here's a weird thought. I think aggro archetype matchups like against each other, two aggro decks have a higher potential for like skill expression than control decks do. That might be a hot take for a lot of you, but that may be the case. Literally anybody can hit legends. That sounds like he's coping. I think this guy's like, ah, I'm diamond five. I can hit legend if I put any, if I put time into it. The watch post should be a nerf. They promoted a slower curve. The choice between when and how to remove them was extremely skill intensive. Bro, what? This is absolutely batshit, if I'm gonna be honest. The watch posts were actually a way to stop your opponent from playing the game. This card had four health, okay? If I coin this card out and you did not have a way to remove it, you just fucking lost. Like, you lost, you fucking lost. Absolutely fucking no. This guy is trolling. Hey, it's David, let's read with. Let's read what my editor has to say. He's going to put this in the video of us guaranteed. Can we just hold on a second? Holy fuck, David's cooking. Give me a second. I got I to gotta go back. Holy shit, David, you're going off. Deck trackers should be ingrained in game. I agree with this, but they won't do it, David. They why would Blizzard want to put the money towards this if someone is literally doing it for free? Card should be free for everything but ranked. David's cooking for chat, boys. David's a man of the people. I don't know if David can. David, the problem with this, bro, is that Blizzard needs to make money. But like, yeah, no one would play. Would anyone care about ranked? I don't know. That's a really interesting thought. The game pivoted hard to pivot towards control and combo meta. It would be a lot more enjoyable, especially with the new disruption cards at the cost of a smaller player base. David's thinking David's a very I don't agree with this, David. I don't. I don't. I think it's it's important to have aggro mid range co control combo attrition. Like I think that's important to have everything. But I can see that like if you if you made the game center around control and combo, the player base that does play it would like it. Came back just in time for my take. Oh shit, he's in the chat now. Oh god. <laughs> David, I think you're you're slightly coping on this one. Aggro decks are used to do Blizzard chores, ranked and quests. <laughs> so this isn't like this blanket statement. <laughs> this isn't always the case though, right? Like some of the quests, yeah, sure. But that's so funny. They are inherently not fun to play, only play to win and not enjoy the process. Unfortunately for you, David, this is a very subjective take. People like playing aggro decks. So this isn't this, but the, uh, uh, the hot take against aggro players, I guess. Lower power level expansions, Rastakhan's Rummels are necessary to not skyrocket the power creep and pace of the game, but that we don't sell well and slowly kill the game. This is right. I wonder if it's possible to make expansions expansions be in a power level where they're like slightly lower, slightly higher, but it like maintains around the same power level. I, I'm not a game designer, but I think it's hard to design cards, design cool and interesting new cards without just naturally raising the bar slightly. Tough. Flash and other summoner spells cooldown should be viewable for everyone. <laughs> what? <laughs> David, we're not playing League, buddy. Timing is not fun and not sale expression, but there's already third party programs that time summoner spells automatically. If they happen on your screen, you press the button to time them. Witcher 3 main story is boring aside from the DLCs. Dude, I actually agree with this so much. I fucking tried to play that game four times, four fucking times. And every single time I stopped playing the game. Combat is mind numbly simplistic. Press two buttons in combat and go around the toucan Sam fish <laughs> looking for clues outside of it. And the world is literally Ubisoft style five points duplicated five times. <laughs> Bethesda has never been good and Starfield will be another iteration of Fallout Skyrim series, but in space. And that's a bad thing. Oh, and spell heavy decks are trash to sign. What is the comment to this? That mess it up. <laughs> Holy shit. David off the rocker, bro. <laughs> I don't agree with this, by the way. I really don't. I think Bethesda 
has had three really good games, at least from the ones I played. I think Skyrim's really good. I think Fallout 3 was really good. And I think New Vegas was really good. I think all three of those deserve to at least be talked about. David, holy fuck, bro. What are you? Is it Crack Thursday? Oh, buddy. Here we go. All right, chat. This is the last hot take of the evening. Everyone enjoy this. Here we go. The game is a pay to win type of game. The time I played, I couldn't make one good deck before it dropped with the new format next year. And this is awful for a card game. That's why I loved Whizbang. Wait, what? Sorry. I feel like if you write a comment like this, you should type how often you play the game. Cause like, that's why I loved Whizbang because I crafted one card to play multiple dude of good decks, but it was fun. And this isn't something to happen to all card games. Because we have a good example of what we could have to make it deck building easier with Legend of Terra Master. Both games are super friendly to new players and give them free dust to make decks and specific card no moment. But okay, I don't know when you start playing the game, Caster, but like Hearthstone gives you a free deck. You get a shit ton of cards and you get the battle pass system and duplicate protection and you get a guaranteed legendary in the first 10 packs. Like you, you actually get so much shit in this game nowadays. Like it's, it's fucking crazy. Like I don't, I don't think this is good at all. I don't think this is great. This sentence right here is not correct at all. Hearthstone is not pay to win. Okay, this is the hottest take of all and people need to fucking get their head out of their ass. This game isn't pay to win, dude. Pay to win specifically is like, I can buy something that you can't buy. This game is pay to play. You can get legend with literally not spending a single dollar. If this comment was made at the start of Hearthstone, it would be a little bit more justifiable because the current system, the, the old system was awful, but the new system is more than enough for you to get legend. It is, it is easy to get legend. 